oh my god so big brother ended about 35 six seven minutes ago and i am here to make my review now stay tuned to the end because we're gonna do a little bit of a change when it comes to the the next weeks that are coming which is we're only one week away from the finale that's so fucking crazy anyway um I only have two pages to review, so that hopefully this review is like maybe 30 minutes long or maybe less. That'd be great because I talk too damn much. Anyway, so let's get started, shall we? So I was too lazy to watch Monday's episode when it actually aired, so I watched it on Tuesday. I was watching it on the bus, by the way, so I'm giving you a picture. I was watching it on the bus. And basically, you know, the episode starts off where Enzo, get, uh, Enzo Memphis gets evicted, and then um, Enzo and Cody are talking and they're basically saying for the next HOH because the whole thing about Kaser, his whole involvement in the HOH, about his, about the whole like, you know, chess thing. They were talking about getting rid of Christmas first. So they thought about blocking Christmas with their things. So the HOH comp, which was basically the comp um, from the veto comp from season six. I don't know. I forgot what it was called. A like King's Knight or something like Knight's Corner or Knight's I don't know. So basically what it was is it's like a game. It's like a game of chess. It has all the, you know, the, the squares and everything. So basically the point of the game was you had to either, you had to move in an L shape. So either I think like one, two, so either two steps, so either like two steps forward this way or two steps this way, you have to make an L shape. So two steps have to be taken and you could take either a left or, or an up or a down, you know, I don't know how to explain it. So where the where the where the board is and then you know you take steps one two and then you take another step and you take another step if you want like one two take another step whatever but wherever you land on you have to flip the the square and it'll show a red square or whatever which shows that that move is that square is out of play it's a lot easier when you actually watch it on the tv because it's hard to explain anyway so the start order was Christmas was going first and Cody then Enzo. So Christmas started near the near a corner, near the near the left. Let's see. The right side on the the you know. I am so bad at explaining this. She started on the the right side, the upper right side, the lower right side actually. So if you think about like the four corners here, she started on this side. And I think and then Cody immediately like started right next to her and she knew instantly like, oh, he he's coming after me. And then Enzo decided to start off all the way up here with his tiles or whatever. And you know, throughout the competition, you know, Cody kept on tailing Christmas and she was starting to figure that out. And Nicole and Cody were realizing that, you know, um, that Enzo was not going through with the plan that they made. I mean. Everybody trying to trust Enzo to do what they want them to do. He literally does whatever he wants to do, A. And B, whenever he tells you he's going to do something, he li like literally never does it. Remember when he wanted to target Nicole and he ended up not targeting Nicole? Remember when the HOH competition where he told Cody he was, gonna, he was going to um, trap Christmas, but he didn't trap Christmas? It was a weird thing. So Nicole and Cody were getting really frustrated with the way Enzo was playing the game because he was basically off all the way over here and Christmas and Cody were like all the way here so the part that I found the most funny was the fact that Cody ended up running out of moves first I was laughing so hard I was literally on the bus like this like you know that you know that meme from America like Tom model cycle 14 where Elasia had that you know I'm gonna probably post a picture saying I don't think I could post like the gif or the video but man, that's it's so funny because I remember watching that episode in real life where 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 um, um Elasia did that like I remember watching that episode and never once did I think like I don't know like ten years later it would become a meme, but it has and that's what I felt like. But I was I was on the bus like yes baby, but I knew that Christmas was gonna run out of moves shortly after. But I found it so funny how the fact that Cody wanted to get rid of Christmas, but she ended up um out moving him. So then of course Christmas only had I think like two moves left and then she lost and then Enzo ended up securing his spot in the final three and he won HOH. Let's see what else I put. Um, blah, blah, blah. So then it says, I put Enzo not going through with the plan and Cody and Nicole are irritated and I put deal with it. 
Um, let's see, blah, blah, blah. So then I put, um, so then I put um, Enzo wins HOH. I'm not mad about it. I'm just glad it wasn't Cody. And then Cody said, I sacrificed my winning HOH to take out Christmas at, just to give it to Enzo. And then I put, well, deal with it. You shouldn't have depended on another person. At the end of the day, one person will win and Enzo is thinking for himself, not you. You should have played for yourself. And I still stand by that statement. No matter how much you can trust the person, you always have to remember that you come first. You know what I'm saying? It's like, like, I'm sorry. It's like, you come in this house by yourself. You have to, you have to look up for yourself because probably nobody's looking out for you in some cases. You know what I'm saying? I, I know I can see Nicole and Cody's frustration, but at the end of the day, it's like Enzo, he got to worry about himself. He ain't worried about you two. He's not trying to worry about you two. But anyway, um, so then, um, Christmas and Nicole are in like the bedroom or whatever. And then Christmas tells Nicole that it's a good thing Enzo won because he, they both will be safe. That's what he, that's what she said. And then Christmas and Enzo talk and they kind of talk to each other that they want to take each other to the final two. Cody and Nicole talk and, um, they talk about the whole like Enzo, like totally not even going through with the HOH, like how they intended to, because it was supposed to be, you know, like Enzo and Cody trapping Christmas. So Christmas could lose first. So they were talking about how like he was literally way off in the distance while Cody was the only one that was, um, tailing Christmas. And basically, um, Cody wants to give Enzo the benefit of the doubt and thinks that he d didn't understand the rules, but Nicole felt like he knew exactly what he was doing, which he kind of did because he kind of said, you know, like he's going to do his own thing and let Cody do the dirty work. Um, and then we got to actually see Enzo's HOH room. Honestly, like, I don't know if Big Brother showing HOH's rooms to kind of bring back the tradition because that was like a Big Brother staple, to be honest. Like, the have not competitions, the, the key wheel, the wheel, not the stupid box, but the key wheel, the key ring wheel, that those are like big brother staples. You know, Pandora's box was a big brother staple for a while and they didn't even bring it back. So like, you know, it's like, who wants to see my HOH room? Like that was such a big thing back then. And I don't know if they're not showing it. They haven't been showing it for the past season just because there's so much to fit in, especially now with 16 house guests. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I think it's kind of hard to like put all that stuff in there. So I feel like either Big Brother's not putting it in there because of that reason, or now they're adding it in here because there's very little content to put on this damn show. And I will explain that in a minute. So we got to see Enzo's HOH room, which again, last week we got to see Nicole's, which in reality, that week of Nicole's HOH, like there was not much talked about. It was very boring in the Big Brother house. So I think that's why that they do that. Um, anyway. Christmas talks with, Co oh yeah, so Christmas ends up pulling Cody aside and, huh? Wait, yeah, okay. So yeah, so basically Christmas and Cody were in a room together um, and she kind of wanted to clear the air. So she asked, she took him to a different room and she asked him, you know, like, why were you tailing me in the HOH? And his bullshit response was like, oh, well, you know, like you started first. So I just like started next to you. I'm like, motherfucker, do you really think Christmas was born yesterday? You really thought this bitch was born yesterday? Because honestly, I love how Cody cannot come up with like a good explanation to why he does something when he knows he's caught. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, he loves to play the whole like, oh, well, I don't know why I did that. I don't know why I did that. When I was like, bitch, you knew exactly what you were doing and you need to work a lot harder to lie and tell these people um, I wasn't coming after you, you fucking delusional, you bitch. That's what I would have said. More or less words. Anyway, so then, um, at some point, Cody calls Enzo out on his HOH win, but, you know, Enzo kind of plays it off, you know, because Cody was saying, like, why weren't you tailing Christmas, blah, 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 blah. And then he was saying, well, I won, and da, da, da. Like, he wasn't even mentioning the whole Christmas thing, like, you know, Cody was trying to get like Enzo to talk about why he did that, but he was just more like, I won, we're safe, it doesn't matter. Um, and then they talk, him and Enzo, Cody and Enzo talk about who they want to send home. And Enzo, again, wants to send Nicole home because she is a former winner. And Cody was telling him like, I, like I'm not gonna keep Christmas over Nicole. Um, and, and again, just to show how much, how much, con like, 
just to show how much like how should i say what makes airtime because you know back in the beginning like all you would see really is just a bunch of game talk you know people talking game and stuff now they're literally showing like just hoh rooms which is great but i feel like they're doing that now because they don't really have much content to show because we literally just got four random as montages of like random moments in the house that are supposed to be like funny or gimmicky like there was one where nicole was in the nicole was in the backyard and i was like wondering what was gonna happen i'm like what's gonna happen and she literally just sneezes like 30 times and i'm just like that's it and they just put like little trumpet sounds every time she sneezed i'm like my brother y'all are really scraping at the bottom of the barrel for something for something you grasping for some content here the second montage was the scene where there was bananas and they were kind of rotting or something like they were getting ripe and then nicole like what nicole grabbed the bananas and she kind of touched cody's sweater with it and he was like saying how he doesn't like the smell of bananas and then the bananas ended up falling and squirting everywhere and yeah okay and then the third thing that they were talking about was um, insecurities that they have. Enzo was in the HOH room, I think, with everybody. So it was Enzo, Christmas, Cody, and Nicole. Um, and Enzo asked, what's your biggest insecurity, I think he said. And I think, like, what's your biggest... He said something about your biggest insecurity and, like, your biggest asset or something. And Cody said that his biggest insecurity was his nose. And Enzo was kind of laughing because he said, like, that's so ridiculous because he said that your nose is fine. To be honest i didn't really see that to be honest like i didn't really see cody's no like honestly like i don't think like he has a bad nose at all i that was like the least thing that i thought like hmm what's your insecurity um or something that he should be like self-conscious about i guess let me say what's mine hmm. i will say definitely my biggest insecure i don't know i don't really have a lot of insecurities to be honest i'm trying to think of mine hmm Maybe that my that maybe that my because I do work out I go to the gym but my body's not skin tight like I can play it off like I can look real good and skin tea hunty but my skin isn't skin tight like I don't have like three four five percent body fat you know I probably have like thirty percent body fat so it's like you know like I'm not the skinniest person in the world but I'm also like not the biggest person in the world I feel like I lay average but again it's like my body's not skin tight like I wish my body was skin tight so i think and i'm not talking about like me losing 100 pounds and me having like that excess skin i don't have the excess skin i just need like my stomach area to kind of tone up and i'm working on that so it's still kind of you know we still got some we still got some skin in there that i kind of want to get rid of and i don't have the money for a fucking that machine that has like that ab machine that kind of like dissolves fat while you're getting abs i don't got that shit okay i know some people that do that but I don't do that. That's probably what would say my biggest insecurity. But you know what? To be honest, like I can really give. A, I don't really care. Like I can probably just like walk around shirtless on the beach, and I don't really give a fuck. It doesn't matter to me. But like I feel like if that's my insecurity, I feel like that's what it'll be. Because I never ever in my life had like a skin tight body. <laughs> you know, always gotta have. I always gotta have some jiggle on my wiggle. Anyway, and then the fourth thing that there were the whole the fourth montage was like small talk and it was Cody and Christmas on the bed uh, um, on in the the living room and they were just having small talk and Christmas asked Cody if like he had any talent shows and if he part and he said no and he asked her like have you participated in any talent shows she's like yeah we did we did a dance number to um Proud Mary by um by um Tina Turner and I was like okay and he's like do you remember the dance moves she's like yeah I, some of them he's like show me the dance moves and she was like showing him the dance moves which was just kind of cringy and he was kind of laughing because he thought they were cringy have i participated in a talent show um yes i did i participated in one talent show back in high school um and yeah so anyway the noms ended up being christmas and nicole no surprise there and Christmas was fucking crying about not winning the, about being nominated. Cause she's like, I feel like I'm on an alone island by myself. And it's like, bitch, the veto's all that matters anyway. Like it doesn't matter if you're nominated. Anyway, so then let's go to Wednesday's episode, which was um, October 21st. So Enzo was saying at the beginning of the episode how he wants Nicole to go. And I put yes. And then I put Christmas crying. It's three against one now, you know, Oh, yeah, so Christmas was crying and she said, like, it's basically three against one, blah, blah, blah. 
And then I put, now you know how Kevin and David felt. <laughs> and then I put, like, girl, stop fucking crying. Did your mom die? Does your baby have the Rona? No? Then shut the fuck up. That's what I put. Um, anyway. What? Okay. So finally, I don't even remember when was the last time they did this, but we have a luxury comp. Woo! -hoo! So my most favorite luxury comp of all time from Big Brother was Big Brother 15, where there was a bunch of balloons and they had to pop the balloons to find the, the they had in, in, in the balloons they had to find a one chip, a zero chip, and a K chip. And I was like, oh, I wonder what, you know, luxury comp they have. Like the one, so the one from BB15, that luxury comp was so fun. I wish I would have participated in that because that was fun. Probably not fun cleaning everything up, but you know, it was fun. This luxury competition was the most stupid luxury competition that you can see, that you could ever think of. Literally what it was is there was the BB comics and each person had to choose, I think four or yeah, four people from those BB comics. And they had to battle each other through a virtual TV to see who would win, which like this is literally like a, a luxury comp that's a game of chance. Like it uses no skill, like not who's the fastest, like not who's the smartest, not who who's the most intellectual, no. You just have to pick four superheroes and see, have a faith in God that your fucking, per, your fucking person would win. This luxury comp was so stupid. And the fucking screen, it was like, on the TV, they had the two superhero characters battling it, it out. It was so fucking stupid. I literally was like looking at it like, you know that Tori, I'll probably put it here, that Tori Kelly meme when was a Taylor Swift won like a VMA and she's like this. That's how I fucking felt watching that. That was garbage. Anyway... Um, Christmas was out first, Enzo second, and it was against Cody and Nicole. And I'm thinking to myself, if fucking Cody wins another fucking thing, I will be so angry. But no, Nicole won the um, luxury competition. At, um, so her winning character was um, Memphis. It was Memphis or whatever. Anyway, so then again, Christmas goes to a room and she starts crying. And she's crying that she didn't choose Memphis. Like, she's not crying that, like, Nicole won. But she was crying, like, I'm so sad because I didn't choose Memphis. I, like, he's my best friend. Like, what do we think of me? I'm like, bitch, he ain't your fucking friend. I'm sorry. He was none of y'all's friend. Like, he was just there to win, honestly. Like, I, I can't think of anything that comes out of his mouth that is equal genuine. You know, like, he just seems like a box of rocks. Like, fucking boring as fuck who doesn't care about friends honestly surprisingly he's still friends with dan I, I that's what i hear unless if he just considers dan's answering machine his friend i don't know anyway um so then they show another segment um oh yeah by the way that luxury cup also took like 20 minutes so i guess big brother did that on purpose um because they literally have nothing else to show anyway Christmas um, was waxing Enzo's eyebrows. <laughs> and then she, um, then she waxes Cody's eyebrows. <sighs> First of all, where did they get that wax? I didn't even know you could get wax in the Big Brother house. Second off, when I think of, when my personal opinion, I say this in a joking slash non-joking matter, but if you're a man and you wax your eyebrows, you're probably gay. So, that's just my thing. And no, I don't wax or do anything to my eyebrows. I like them to be thick and furry like they are now. I can care less. Anyway, so then Enzo's in his HOH room and he does like, he's like looking at the monitors and he sees Cody and Christmas in the kitchen and he's like making commentary on, on them. And he says like how... Christmas is cool, cool as a cucumber because she's like literally just sitting there eating her food. And then he said that Cody looks tense and he was roasting the fact that he was wearing like ankle socks or like knee, like, like some high socks with sweatpants and shoes on, like loafers or something, slippers. Okay. And then um, Enzo was saying how he, he's rooting for Christmas to win the veto and he, he wants to convince her if she does win to get rid of Nicole. Girl, no. You can go home with that. And then I put, okay. So the veto comp, which is, oh yeah. So in the veto comp, 
the little commentary that they give in the cards, it says the BB fans call the the house gets hamsters. When in my life have I ever heard the the people call house gets hamsters? Like never have I heard that. Anyway, so um, this was the the typical you know what day did this occur? First of all, I don't know how these people remember this because to be honest i'm not sure in the house you really have nothing to do besides just think about the days about what happens during those days because for me it's like like what day was this person evicted or what day was there like a veto used i'm like i don't fucking remember i remember the week but i don't remember the exact day like that has to be super hard honestly so it's like when i'm in that house i gotta memorize that shit like oh fuck anyway so I put, I cannot believe I'm rooting for Christmas to win the veto because I literally want her to shake things up, get rid of Cody, do something interesting because this season has been so, so fucking lackluster. Anyway, so it's actually a lot harder than it seems because not only do you have to remember the exact day that something happened, on the hamster wheel, you can only go forward, but you cannot go back, which is like so impossible because if you go over, you got to start all over, baby. So anyway, um, so then on the very first round, Christmas gets a strike because you have three strikes to get out. And I'm thinking to myself, Christmas, you dumb bitch, get it together. But then Enzo ends up going out first, which I'm like, okay, good. Like Christmas still got this. She still got this. And then third was Christmas and I put you dumb bitch. Second was Nicole and Cody won the veto which looks like this week's going to be already pretty predictable that Christmas is going home. By the way, this is Cody's seventh competition win. He's won three HOHs so far and four vetoes. Which means that he no longer can beat Janelle Pierzina's legendary reign of nine comp wins in a season. So I'm happy about that. That's something to celebrate. But anyway, this also, for the first time ever in Big Brother history, two people will go to the final three without ever being nominated. The, the first time this was, did I say first time in Big Brother? Actually, second time in Big Brother history. The first time was Danielle Reyes and Jason from season three, which was well over 15 years ago, literally for the, for the first time in like 15, 16, 17 years. Two house guests will be advancing to the final three without being nominated, which is crazy. And we'll see. We'll talk about this in a minute. Anyway, so, um, yeah, Christmas is crying and all I thought was, bitch, you deserve to go home. So that means for the first, oh, I put that. So that means for the first time in 17 years, two people will make it to the final three never nominated. Um, yeah, and Christmas literally was crying this entire episode. And I'm thinking to myself, bitch, I have no sympathy for you. You could have taken yourself off and you didn't. Shut up. Anyway, um, and then there was a clip where, you know, Nicole was questioning if Cody would try to go after her or try to get rid of her because she's a former winner. And then the ending was just basically Cody questioning, like, who he should take because he was basically saying, should I stick to my guns? Should I, should I stick to loyalty? Because but loyalty got me second place so like i don't know what to do anyway we're moving on to thursday's episode which was october 22nd 2020 enzo was telling christmas that he wanted to keep her and he's trying to convince cody to uh to get rid of nicole and then cody and nicole are talking and then nicole was basically saying on her original season she used to be innocent and then she also talked about how she spent 230 days in the big brother house which is i think most and more than any other person has been um and then Cody jokingly was telling her how she's going to go home for that. And then Enzo, um, what? Oh yeah. And the Enzo was basically saying how he thinks it's better for his game to take Christmas to the final three because he knows that she will take him. Um, and then Cody's still leaning on taking Nicole because they were speaking about it. And then, you know, Enzo was thinking like, and Enzo was telling Cody this about how he thinks it's better to take Christmas because they, they can both beat her at the end. And Cody's still leaning on keeping Nicole. Um, and then uh, Christmas was talking to the camera in the in the bedroom, talking about how she's she got burned by Enzo three times. Um, and then 
Christmas on a last-ditch last effort to keep herself safe in advance of the final three, she tells Cody of Enzo's plan of why he wants and of why Enzo wants to keep her and not Nicole about the whole thing about he wants to take her because she feels like Enzo can't beat Cody and then she also um, says how he wants Nicole out and basically he's been targeting Nicole for the whole season and then she um, and then Christmas officially told Cody that she wants to take she will take him to the final two if she's kept and then Cody was acknowledging Christmas's fighting hard spirit and then um, there was a scene where Nicole was imagining winning and they showed like her season where she won, like in the background or in the foreground or whatever. Um, and then Nicole, and then Nicole, um, oh yeah. So then Cody tells Nicole about Christmas saying that she wants to take him to the final two. And then, you know, Cody was talking about like, this feels like a repeat of Big Brother 16. And he said, should I choose loyalty or someone you know you can beat? And then the next segment is the jury house. And then they were talking about who they want to see, who they want to see through the doors. And Day said she wants Enzo to stay. Ian says that he feels like it's Christmas. Kevin says that he wants it to be Cody because he doesn't, he's not his favorite person. And then Danny, of course, loves to give Cody his prof because she loves sucking his dick. And then David, oh yeah. So then Kevin thinks it'll be maybe Cody or Memphis. And Memphis ends up coming through the door. And David said, that he was pretty happy that to see Memphis because he said on a social level we never got along well yeah David you guys never got along because you're black and he obviously doesn't like black people because he almost called you the n-word on national television so he doesn't like Ian either apparently because he makes fun of people with disability so y'all should have known this from the beginning but whatever anyway so then they were watching the video montage of uh Memphis's eviction and Day was saying how you know she's realizing Nicole's strategy of like literally like l being under the radar and then start winning towards the end. And then, um, and then Tyler even was acknowledging that, you know, Cody and Enzo are like the bigger targets than Memphis. And then Davon um, said that in order for Enzo to win, he has to clip Cody. And then Memphis said that he feels like Christmas is the most dangerous player because she will do whatever it takes to, to get further, which that is true. Um, and then Danny, okay, so yeah, they were talking about, so basically they were talking about how Nicole makes it to the final two, she may win this because she is a former winner. And then Danny says that she wants to crown a winner that's well-rounded. It doesn't matter if you won. She wants to crown someone who's well-rounded and she feels like Cody's well-rounded. So basically she says, I don't get why people are gonna be voting based on like personal, not game. This is coming from a bitch on season 13 when Rachel and Portia won the final. So she voted for Portia to win when Rachel was clearly the real winner of the season because she felt like Rachel was the floater of the season when in reality, Rachel was on the block five times. She had a wit. She won probably the most competitions out of everybody there. On top of that, she was a target from day one when she came as a veteran. So... But you, you, Danny, voted for Portia to win because you thought Portia played a better game than Rachel. <laughs> Bitch, you're a delusion. You're a delusion. Anyway, but I'm glad that you, um, you know, acknowledge good gameplay now. Thank you. Because of your bullshit vote last time. Girl, no, that was personal. That was personal. Anyway, so then um, we get to, wait, what? Okay. So then we get to the voting and Christmas and Nicole have to give their, you know, final speeches. Nicole of Christmas, you know, drops a bombshell on Enzo by saying, congratulations, Enzo, you're going to be third place again. And then she tells Cody, you know, it's better to keep me rather than keeping a former winner. My thoughts exactly. And then no surprise, no surprise, Cody ends up clipping Christmas. And yeah, we get to the Christmas interview and um she asked so julie asked christmas if she saw it coming and then christmas said for weeks i saw it coming and then she said you know at least she fought and then uh julie asked her how she's feeling because you know this whole week she's been an emotional wreck and she said she was shocked um julie asked if there was like anything personal because you know christmas told cody in before she left that there was nothing personal between them so julie asked is there really something personal and then she said no there is not 
And then Christmas said if she would she have taken him to final two? Like genuinely would a Christmas would Christmas take Cody to the final two? And Christmas said yes, because she felt like Enzo lacked loyalty because of all the things that were going along. And then Julie asked her if she felt that she would have been able to win out of all the nom all the people out of Nick. If she took Nicole, Enzo, or Cody, would she have been able to win? And she said she felt like she would have been able to win maybe with all of them being in the final two with her because she said that she felt like she had a good argument because she you know she won competitions she was protected and she not she wasn't afraid to get her hands dirty blah 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 and then um and then from all the goodbye messages goodbye messages she got julie asked her like is there anything like shocking that you heard from this and she said no i've been knowing this from like a mile away blah 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 and then she said her last words were the haters had a good time watching me and i put girl if only you knew how much the haters dislike you heavily i was literally rooting for you like these last two weeks but girl like i spent a majority of the time disliking you as and i'm pretty sure the world was happy to see you go home with memphis right right in front of you like girl you're gonna come home and you're gonna see that your fitness app has one star reviews you're gonna see the mass amount of backlash that you got with your argument with day and bay you're gonna see your instagram filled your tag photos filled with just your mug shots and um jail bars in front of your mug shot girl i don't know what to tell you i will say this you know with that aside with that aside I commend you for how hard you fought. Girl, you really went there. And like, honestly, like this is how you play this game. Like even though if you feel like you may be going home, just sticking that last-ish effort. Like she gave so much effort instead of just saying, well, I'm going home, there's not much I can do. You know, like the fact that she actually, you know, like used what she had until the final, like her last breath basically, you know, she, fought hard and I'm very very proud of her I will say that that's how you play this game you just don't sit there and say well I'm going home so what what's the point of talking to these people like she at least tried she tried and I commend her for that anyway so then they um so then Julie Chen um ends up Miss Moonbez shows them she talks about like oh you must be missing your family so here's your families and then Cody goes first and it was his girlfriend and then Cody starts crying like a little bitch. And I'm thinking to myself, Cody, don't cry. That's fucking gay. That's gay. Like, <laughs> and then um, Enzo, um, it's his kids. And Enzo was kind of like, it showed like he was going to tear up a little bit, but he didn't cry. He didn't like full fledged cry. Cody was fucking red in the face. He, he was red. It looked like his ass cheeks when they slap it too hard that by his girlfriend when she's pegging him. But like literally like Cody was red as fuck. Enzo, you know, it looked like he was about to cry, but he held it in. And I'm like, that's how a man acts. No, just kidding. Um, but like, yeah. So, and literally, the camera was trying so hard. They they like pop. They expanded on his face to try to get that little tear to come out, but nothing happened. And then Victor was Nicole's um, message, and Nicole didn't cry too, like a man. Anyway, no shame in a guy crying, you know. You're allowed to cry when there's a death in the family. You're you're allowed to cry the birth of your child, but or if your dog dies or if your pet dies. But other than that, seeing a message from somebody. No, just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm trying to think of the most ridiculous thing I cried about. I had, most ridiculous thing I cried about. I cried one time when I was drunk because I thought I lost my backpack. And it's a big backpack. It's very hefty. And I just like literally left it because I went out to go dance and all that stuff. And I was by a booth because my friend knew the person who was running the booth. And I literally just left it without even knowing. And I, you know, I um, I was dancing with my friends and blah, blah, blah. And then that's when I realized, holy shit, my book bag. Like, where's my backpack? <gasps> I was freaking out. And then the person was like, it's right here next to you. It's right here next to me. And I was like, oh my God. And I was like, I was like literally like about to. I didn't cry cry like Cody did but like I was you know I was his kind of hysterical I was like oh my god I'm so happy I thought I lost my book bag yeah that's probably mo the most ridiculous thing I cried about <sighs> anyway yeah another thing that too it's like I've never been in the big brother house so I don't know personally but it's like 
y'all are away from people for like three months and like y'all are crying you're crying the fact that you see these people it's like for me it's like i feel like yes i love my family but if like if i haven't spoken to them in a while like will i literally like start bawling my eyes out by a message that the, i get sent from them you know what i'm saying like i don't know like does the big brother house screw you up that much where it's like you're in a house and you don't have contact with your family for three months and the first time you get to see your family that's when you just start crying like i don't know like maybe that'll affect me in that way when i'm in there i don't know we'll see but it's really weird because i don't know it's like i don't feel like i would be that emotional to see something from home because there's been times uh, uh, horrible family member right here you know there's been times where like you know like i don't talk like from for example my cousin and i i, I have a favorite cousin i love her her name is regina i love her so much but there are times where we don't talk for like three four five months there was a point where we didn't talk for a year but you know every time we're, we're those type of we're those type of cousins and that we have that type of relationship where like when we don't talk for a long period of time the time we do talk it's like we picked up where we left off you know it's not like that awkward thing like oh like you know where have you been or like what how school you know isn't the fuck sorry i thought i heard something but that's our type of you know rapport i guess and yeah, there's been times where I didn't talk to her for like two, three, four, five months. And, you know, when she texts me out of the blue, I'm not like, oh my God, it's her. Like, no, I just say, hey girl, what's up, bitch? What you got going on? You know, like, I don't know, but we'll see. Updates for what's happening is, um, sorry, that's fucking, that freaked me out a little bit. We're not gonna talk about it. Anyway so the updates that are coming up it's um so at the end of the episode julie announced that there would be um a special friday's episode which i think i think they're just they may show just like never like they ha i'm just i'm pretty sure they're gonna show like unseen moments you know from the house but all the life readers have probably seen it i feel like that's what it may be i may or may not review it we're gonna have a Monday's episode, which will, sh I think, show the first part of the Head of Household competition. And then we have the finale, which is two hours. It said eight, nine central. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be eight to 10, not eight to nine. Um, so we have that going on. So I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna probably maybe watch Friday. So I will watch Friday and I will watch Mondays and I will post the, I will post the, um, a review for those days only so you so i have this week which is week 11 i believe and then i will post and I, on monday this upcoming monday i will post friday and monday's episode and i'll put like 11.5 as in week 11.5 review because it's half of the week and the bb finale will be its own separate video so that's going to be the schedule so i'm not going to be so yeah i will be posting a video on monday for the for the next two episodes that are coming i'm not gonna i'm not gonna post the i'm not gonna wait till wednesday to make the whole montage like i want the finale to be its own episode so friday's episode and monday's episode will be posted together as those two episodes on monday and then wednesday will be the finale which i will put in a separate video the pre are coming back to speak on the season i don't know if it's going to be through skype through zoom or in person but anyway, I'm so, so excited. Anyway, see y'all Monday. Until next time. Bye.